In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light. But he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of the blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This candlelight is a symbol of Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world, the hope of the world. On this day, the light died, was put out and hidden from our eyes. On this day, a terrifying darkness came upon the earth. On this day, a deep sorrowful silence has entered our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have failed you as did your disciples, and we ask for your mercy and your help. Our selfishness betrays you. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. We fail to share the pain of your suffering. Lord, forgive. 
Christ have mercy. We are afraid of being known to belong to you. Lord forgive. Christ have mercy. We who inflict wounds on each other be merciful to us. We who deny justice to others be merciful to us. We who seize wealth be merciful to us. We who are greedy be merciful to us. We who put others on trial be merciful to us. We who refuse to receive be merciful to us. We who are afraid of the world's torment be merciful to us. Giver of life, we wait with you to bear hope to the earth's darkest places. Where love is denied, let love break through. Where justice is destroyed, let righteousness rule. Where hope is crucified, let faith persist. Where peace is no more, let passion live on. Where truth is denied, let the struggle continue. Reach into this silent darkness with your love. Deepen the terror of this moment into new hope. Relieve the hideous cries with your quiet voice of peace. That here we may know your salvation, your glory, your future in Jesus Christ, the crucified Lord. Amen. As Jesus died on the cross, he cried out with the words of Psalm 22. And so we read that now. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver. Let him rescue the one whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me. They're like a ravening and roaring lion. I'm poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd. And my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. The dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet are shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. Oh, help me, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. For the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. 
I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. And I shall live with for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. And now we come to a reading of the crucifixion account from Matthew's Gospel. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You would destroy the temple and build it in three days? Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, cannot save himself. He's the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. The reading from Matthew's Gospel paints for us an image of the cross. An innocent, graceful, godly, beautiful man is put to death on an instrument of torture. He is derided by people who would call themselves religious leaders and jeered even by the criminals who are being put to death beside him. Just before he dies, the man cries out in his pain. It is an agony that is physical, but also of abandonment and despair. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It would be hard to find a starker picture 
And the scriptures present an array of further images to unfold what the cross brings about. The Bible speaks about the cross achieving our release from slavery, slavery of the human capacity to mess things up that holds each of us. It talks about the cross bringing about the reconciliation of all things. Other images are of the putting right of old wrongs, of victory over the powers of death and darkness. What scripture doesn't say so much about is precisely how Jesus' death on the cross brings about all that it results in. It doesn't explain the mechanics. Lots of attempts to do this have been made by theologians since biblical times. Theologians describe these attempts as theories of the atonement. Such theories leave me cold. To do their work, they depend on betraying God the Father. At best, it seems to me, as a distant dispenser of impersonal judgment. At worst, as some kind of cosmic child abuser. They don't speak to me of the loving Father that Jesus knew and that he wanted us to know too. Are such theories, in fact, a cul-de-sac, a blind alley generated by a culture, culture which generations back decided that everything must have some readily explicable reason which enables us to say, so it's all right then. Because the truth about the cross is it's not all right. It's miserable, tragic, brutal, savage, ghastly, horrid, wretched, appalling, vicious and heartbreaking. What we need in response to the cross is not rationality but the biblical notion of lament. Lament is what happens when we ask why and don't get an answer. Lament is what happens when we are caused to look beyond ourselves at the suffering of the world, at the suffering of others, at suffering for which there are no simple or even complicated explanations. On the cross, Jesus doesn't account for what he's going through. He cries out in pain and bewilderment at what he is experiencing. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I believe that in this scream of absence, Jesus is joined by the Father who through the anguish of the Spirit cries out too in lament at what is happening. Lament that forms a chink, a space, a possibility within which God's unquenchable love can dwell, where God's love can never be extinguished or overcome, where even the darkest evil shall not have the final say. So what do I urge you to do with the image of the cross this day? Nothing other than to sit with it, experience it, cry out for it, not to explain it or justify it. Let it be what it is in all its horror and hurt its pain and aim of annihilation. Lament it. And lamenting, ask God to form a chink within your own heart, a space where the cross is through the cross. God's love can dwell and grow. Amen.
So I invite you, if you can, to hold a cross or to look at a picture of the cross or make the sign of the cross and join me as we say together. Father, hear our prayer and forgive us and stop our ears that we may receive the gospel of the cross. Lighten our eyes that we may see your glory in the face of your Son. Penetrate our minds that your truth may make us whole. Fill our hearts with your love that we may love one another as you love us. We thank you, loving Jesus, that on the cross you were willing to forgive those who hated and condemned you to death. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise you for your mighty resurrection. For by virtue of your cross, joy has come into the world. We thank you that you showed compassion even from the cross. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise you for your mighty resurrection. For by virtue of your cross, joy has come into the world. We thank you that the penitent thief received your forgiveness as he acknowledged your kingship. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise you for your mighty resurrection. For by virtue of your cross, joy has come into the world. We thank you that you were willing to be obedient even to death on the cross. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise you for your mighty resurrection. For by virtue of your cross, joy has come into the world. We thank you that by your eternal death, you won for us eternal life. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise you for your mighty resurrection. For by virtue of your cross, joy has come into our world. As you have loved us, so may we receive your grace to love one another for the sake of him who died for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So in our place of prayer in solidarity with the suffering of Christ and all God's people in every place, place we say, the cross is the way of the lost, the cross is the staff of the lame, the cross is the guide of the blind, the cross is the strength of the weak, the cross is the hope of the helpless, the cross is the water of the seeds. The cross is the source of those who seek water. The cross is the cloth of the naked. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church, peace and concord, and to sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God for ever and ever. Amen.